Yeah, I know. That was a bit dramatic, wasn't it? <laughs> um, so, for starters, uh, I was going to do some plant stuff today. Um, kind of go over just what I've got started um, for my, my seed starts and all that. But before I do anything, um, I got a package in the mail and I didn't know who it was from, so I made my husband open it. And you guys, I'm super, super excited. My best friend, Davin, thank you. I hope you're watching this. Got me Banaton bowls for my bread. And they're proofing bowls. I am so, so, so excited. And it, it's an awesome set. So it comes with these liners um, for the bowls. And um, let me see if I can show you just. Pretend, use your imagination with me really quick. So you put them over like this, and then you put them inside, you, you make sure they're nice and snug. Um, and you can see that it's got the liner on the inside. And all you do, and if I, if I, if I, I haven't used these before, so I'm pretty sure all you do is you flour this, and then uh, you put your bowl, your, your bread dough in here after you get it shaped and you need to proof it. And you just throw a tea towel over the top and you and you let it sit um you don't use these for baking and like you can you can kind of see like there's some slivers you know and that's kind of normal you know I've, I've seen a lot of that with banathon bowls um i've even heard too that you can like oil them almost um the same way you would with like um a bamboo cutting board and things like that and it's cool too because it came with a few things. So it came with, um, oh god, what is this? Shit, I can't think of the name because I never use it. Um, but it came with this, and this is actually pretty, pretty sharp. Um, so I think I'm actually gonna use this to make pasta too. Um, so maybe I'll have to get a uh, like a gnocchi roller, um, so I can do that. And it looks like these are a really great quality, too. I mean, it feels really sturdy. There's no wiggle with it as far as the handle. And then it's a reset. So there's the little slivers here. And then they just put the put the um, bits in to keep it in place. So that's really cool. And then I got a, a it came with a scorer, too. And it came with, like, a, one of those silicone, like, baster brushes. But my daughter's been playing with that, and that's, I don't know where that is right now. And it's fine, because we have a couple other ones, so I, I, I can never have enough of them. So I'm really excited about being able to use this. So maybe I'll um, use this for some banana loaf soon, or something like that. Um, I've been talking about making some banana bread. Um, I want to say... That I might have man mentioned um, using my my wet dough recipe that I found that I've been using, and it's that. Let me be very clear: it is not my recipe. I did not come up with that recipe. Um, there is a video I found. I'm like 90% sure. Mary's Nest on YouTube. Um, she's so sweet. I I absolutely adore her. Um, she she's the one that showed me that video and it was after i had already seen a separate wet dough recipe video um that i decided to get that one to try i don't know why i have that and then it was super cute too you know this little mug and it's so sweet and it came with socks so i had the socks on i don't have wine in it i don't have wine in it. it's a little too early so just apple juice but the socks are great super okay <laughs> um but it was super fun too. My husband had to um, stop at where'd you go? Menards and Walmart. Menards. You got the blueberries at Menards. Yeah. And look what he found at Menards, guys. We have blueberries. So we have two of them. And I think I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear out the front beds and put these in there because they take so there's a little like planting instructions and then about blueberries on this side and I mean it zones four to seven which is pretty standard um they don't do so well in super heat and they don't do great in a lot of sun so I'll, I'll just read you what it says so these are Jersey blueberry 
which is um, just a variety of blueberry. You can get a ton of different varieties. So it says, um, blueberry jersey is a cold hardy zones four through seven self pollinating, which is really helpful if it's self pollinating because if you don't get pollinators, otherwise you're not going to get any fruits so this this handles that itself so if there's no bees or or um, butterflies or hummingbirds or any of that come through and, and pollinate with this it's still I'm still gonna get fruits off this um, I mean you can freeze you can freeze blueberries you can freeze them whole <laughs> sorry my husband came back in. He had to go out to the car and he like slides this like aluminum foil roll on our pack like under the table and I'm looking at him like what is it? And he goes gordita and walks away. <laughs> um, the one thing to definitely do though with blueberry bushes is you have to prune them in the fall. Like when you're when you're winterizing and getting all that stuff ready, you have to do it. Oh, here's the planting instructions. Plant in well-drained, fertile soil, full sun. Okay, so these cannot go in the front. They, however, can go on the side of the house, which is a, is a solid possibility. Because um, the full, the front and the, the, the front doesn't get full sun. It gets sort of half, like partial. Uh, it's pretty shaded in the front, so, but that that's just a little side thing so maybe maybe i'll be able to get that going soon and have you guys along with me for that that'll be fun i love blueberries um there's a campground i used to go to sugar shores in illinois if i remember right towards the rasco Rockton area rochelle i think maybe um and we had a spot on the back of the lot in this almost like cul-de-sac kind of a situation your pond well if you went around and you were able to hike through those woods behind that if you went far enough it took you by a farm and there was blueberry bushes raspberry bushes blackberry bushes there was even i think boysenberries and i would take my like sun hat and i would just take my sun hat off and fill it with berries and i'd snack on the way back to the campsite and I was young you know but that was I mean I was a 90s baby so you know my parents were used to letting me wander off like that um so this is the notebook that I've been using and actually transitioning to use so I have like it has its own little tabs and it's cool because like these you can move around you know but then I've been using these independently um, and I like them so far. Um, I haven't had any issues with them. And it's nice because they are fairly sticky and you get a few of them. Like, uh, let me see. I know it only sounded like three, but there's a few. There's a few. There's enough. Um, and then this is all the stuff that I'm having to actually transition from the old notebook so I can have that old, other notebook specifically for um, like garden layout plan um, size dimension things like that um, where I want trellises and things to go um, and then blueprints for stuff that I want to do so we want to make roof boxes for potatoes um, with a side door that opens so that way we don't lose so much soil um, and, and potentially damage potatoes and things like that um, and then like we want to make, I want to make um, a sun dryer for sun dried tomatoes and peppers um, and stuff like that. But I mean I have a seed log and you can kind of see, like I'm going to hold it up so you guys can see. It's just literally like what my seeds are. Um, I have the name. I'm, I'm trying to log and keep track of what brand everything is. And the reason I'm doing that is because there are different germination rates. Um, with different brands of seeds that I've noticed so far. So I have used some, I have Burpee, I have Gurney, I have Baker Creek, I have M.I. Gardener, I have Valley Green, and then Fairy Moore. Um, and I've noticed, and then, and then um, some of the herbs that we got in a kit off Amazon, which I don't know what the brand is. I, I don't have branding information on that um 
but there are there are certain brands that just do better um, that are a bit more strict on who and how they allow you to make and create seeds uh, for them to sell um, and that's just what it is but I have all my my stuff so I have my my germ timelines I have my how much sun they need and and some of them even what temperatures um, so like the butter crunch lettuce I got um, that was actually gifted through uh, Baker Creek um, and you can find Baker Creek you just go to Google and type in Baker Creek and you'll find the website and it'll say rare seeds on it and it I, I can I can see if I can add that link. I haven't tried any of that stuff yet, but I just have all that information. And then like um, some of them are serious, um, seriously heritage ha uh, heirlooms. Like uh, I have a Cherokee uh, Trail of Tears bean, right? Like that is an old, old, old bean, and that has a lot of history in those seeds. Like and that so that's really cool. Um, and I have some new stuff that I haven't gotten, gotten yet, and I haven't been able to log all my stuff yet. Um, I just haven't. Um, but for the most part, I kind of have an idea of what brand is what. Um, but, I mean, <laughs> it's very possible that I'm not entirely reliable on that anymore because, in fact, I've surpassed 100 seeds. I, d I don't know how many seeds I have anymore. Um... I did get some seeds and seed starts going yesterday, and then my husband has purchased recently mint and um, rosemary from Walmart, and it was already pre-started. It was already just starts, um, and he just brought it home, and we've been getting it growing. I've been having an issue with my rosemary, but the mint is doing phenomenal, so I'm not too worried about that, but I will keep the mint in a container, um, in its own container and pot, because it is invasive. Um, I don't want it uh, establishing itself too strongly um, within um, like a shared space, shared herb space, because it'll just take everything else over. Um, same thing with beans or anything that binds. Like if you trellis that and you train it, you, you're not going to have as much of an issue. Um, but if you just do a mound, like um, like 90% of the the packets will tell you like build a mound and then you divot and then you plant your seeds in the base of that divot and then it'll grow within that like no it's gonna take over everything uh, but just really quick I'm gonna go over kind of what I've started some of the stuff I've started some of the stuff I haven't but just kind of where I'm going with this year because when Hero destroyed my peppers let me be very clear he was fine he got in trouble but he was fine um, he wiped out all of my habanero seeds, and he wiped out all of those jalapeno seeds I had. So all those um, mammoth jalapeno seeds and the habanero, the orange habanero seeds, we had seeds saved from last year, um, and we we don't have any more because we we didn't do it quite right. So we germinated them all. Um, and we put them all in a damp paper towel, in a baggie, um, in the bathroom under grow lights. And that's where we got the germ rates from. However, they did much better than either of us expected. And in hindsight, we, wouldn't, we shouldn't have started all of those seeds. Um, there was a lot of seeds that were dead seeds that I had to pull from the jalapenos. From the mammoth jalapeno. But I, I have been able to replace my jalapeno. I was I have not found ow, um, habaneros. So I think what I'm going to try to do is see if I can... Oh, sorry, my nose itches. I don't know why. Um, see if I can find just a habanero somewhere and just seed save it at home and do it that way and then save it for next year. Um, because it's just too late. I've already gotten other peppers picked out that I think I, I'm gonna like better, so we'll do it that way. But um, I'm only reading off three types of basil, although we have technically started four. Uh, the reason I'll only be having the three on this list is because one of them we have in what was 
a um, candle holder. It's a the just the containers, the candles, the glass one. So, you know, we cleaned it out, we got it all cleaned, we uh, put soil in it, and then we put um, spicy globe basil seeds in there to germinate so we can have some inside in the kitchen right there um, and just try to keep it as long as we can and just keep sowing in seeds and so it keeps going throughout the year. Um, and, and I'm thinking that we're going to leave up um, the the shelving in the bathroom um, and, and I mean I have my, my little container of my my tray of seeds which I mean it's nothing fancy it's just a plastic tray on the bottom to hold extra water with biodegradable cardboard recycled cardboard um, start containers with with uh, starting soil and my seeds and my um, in my tags and they're just the plastic ones and I just use my label maker to make a label for it and did it that way because when Hero destroyed my seeds um, I had all of those tags but I did them originally with permanent marker and that was just kind of a pain in the butt so my husband CJ and I worked on um, getting that off and then redoing those labels so we uh, so we'll probably end up figuring out another way to do it but it's fine um, so we have in the in the in the for the kitchen we'll do we'll have the spicy globe basil we'll have lemon drop basil red reuben basil and mammoth basil now mammoth basil is really similar to genovese which is generally what you can get at the store um it, it's it's just the leaves are bigger um the lemon drop and the red reuben i've never had nor have i grown before last year we did just the standard which I'm assuming was the Genovese and then we had Thai basil too and I really loved both of what we had last year but I'm looking for more of a variety um, you just have to keep in mind if you're gonna do basil you can put them in containers that's a really great way to do it um, but much like peppers you have to kind of keep them a bit separated otherwise they're gonna cross pollinate and then you're gonna get really weird seeds for the next year um, one really cool thing though about um, basil is you can use it as an ornamental flower um, because it does flower. It'll bolt after a certain time and then it starts getting these flower buds on it. Um, and it's a super pretty plant. I think it is. It smells wonderful. It brings a bunch of pollinators near. So it's super, super helpful for the environment and for your garden. It's just beautiful and it smells great and it's edible, which is wonderful. Um, and, and another thing that's really cool about basil is that you can actually eat those flowers. Like you can, you can use that, you can saute it, you can chop them up, and you can use them for tea, you can put them in soup, you can put them on a salad, you can um, even just cut basil and do it like cut flowers in a vase, or vase, however you want to say it, um, like as a, as a decoration or a centerpiece, like that'd be a really cool way to do it. Um, I have my purple tomatillo. I'm only doing one of each. I was going to do like double of everything um, because we did expand the garden space. So we are now working with 50 feet long of a space by like 30 to 32 wide, which is decent. Um, I'm not complaining about that at all. Um, but I knew with how much I want to grow, how much food preservation I've already had, like kind of planned in my head, um, that I was just going to need more space. Now we've only tilled what was already tilled. Um, we have not dug up and tilled that grass and pulled that sod out. Um, we're actually thinking that we're going to do um, raised beds in that space and I'm fine with that. Um, and because we're going to have to do along the south side of the fence, um, we're going to do the corn there anyway. Um, so I think that'll be fine, and I think we're just gonna do 50 things of it. We're just gonna do one, one corn stalk per foot along that fence. That and that'll help with privacy because it's only a chain link. But um, so we have lemon drop basil. We have spicy globe that's gonna be in the kitchen in the container. Red Reuben, um, mammoth basil, 
And then there are so many kinds of basil, you guys, it's not even funny. Um, like if you're a cinnamon lover, there is cinnamon basil. I would highly recommend you trying that. If you have tried it, let me know what you thought. Um, cause I'm not a huge lover of cinnamon. Um, it's kind of taken me some adjusting to figure out how I do enjoy eating cinnamon. Like I like it if I've done it in the moderation that I enjoy. Um, but if it's like the cinnamon toast as a kid, wasn't my, wasn't my game, man. Um, so, but we're going to have a purple tomatillo, which is super cool. Um, I like the different colored stuff instead of just the standards that you see at the store, you know? Um, and then we're going to do ground cherry tomatoes, which have a husk very similar to a tomatillo. Um, and they'll just fall to the soil when they're ready. Um, and that's how you know you need to harvest. You just pick them up and then you can, it's really cool too, because you can take those husks and you can just toss them in your compost um, to put down for next year, which is super nice. Um, and then we're gonna do brandywine pink. And we actually watched a video last night on brandywine comparison between the red, pink, and yellow. So I really wanna get some yellow um, because the one thing was is like the pink and the red, they were only like an ounce different from each other, right? Um, but the yellow was like two ounces bigger than both of them um, and the only issue I had was that the pink had cracking and all that is is just underwatering for a long time like if you're having if you live somewhere really hot like um say you lived in like Arizona and it's super hot all year and no matter how much you water you're just not able to water them consistently enough to, to hydrate them to where they need to be and then all of a sudden you get this big rainstorm in and it rains for like a week straight, right? Um, there's only so much room that that, can, that tomato can grow without something cracking. It's basically a stretch mark on a tomato. So it's only aesthetic. It doesn't change the flavor of it at all. It does not change the integrity of that tomato. So it's not really that big of a deal, but um, I don't think I would ever, because we do have brandy wine reds, and I don't think I would ever plant the reds and the pinks in the same year. I just don't, don't really see myself doing that. Um, I, I see myself, if anything, doing, um, if I like the pinks this year, getting the yellows and then planting two in the yellow. I just, I, I'm a fan of anything that's different, so... Um, we have San Marzano, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to do paste tomatoes with this. So that's a paste tomato. So I'm going to do like um, pasta sauces, tomato sauce. I'm going to do like diced tomatoes, sauteed tomatoes, sun-dried, hopefully. Um, if not, I'll just do oven roast and make sauce that way. Um, and probably salsas too. Um, now there is some stuff that we got from the farmer's market last year. There was this vendor, and I feel horrible. I can't remember his name. He was absolutely wonderful. He he was really the one that like got me into wanting to grow tomatoes because the only tomatoes that we had were uh, yellow pear tomatoes, right? And like you can get those at the store. I wasn't, it wasn't anything super crazy to me. I wasn't super shocked about it. But then we met this vendor and he had the most unique looking tomatoes I've ever seen that were like different colors and different shapes and like some of them were like huge you know big as your head type of thing and we seed saved a lot of those because we couldn't eat all of them like i just didn't know what to do with them um because we had so many like there were i will admit there were some stuff that i would i would eat way too fast <laughs> um like the cherry tomatoes there was um like a globe tomato I want to say it was the Sun Globe tomato. And like I eat the whole cart and just snack on it real quick. But um, I have my mystery green tomatoes. So I'm hoping to do like fried green tomatoes with that. Because I have a decent batter recipe that I did recently to make some onion rings for my daughter. And um, I haven't used it on fried chicken yet. So I'm going to try it with that soon, hopefully. Um, and then I have my West of Pecan Peach. Now I know that sounds like a ridiculous name. I got this seed from my Gardener after I had heard Jess from Roots and Refuge talk about it 
and it's really cool because it's got that fuzz on it like the same way a peach does so i'm thinking of maybe trying to use this for a <laughs> marinade <laughs> and like can of mar bless you <laughs> for um like a jam or a jelly or something like that um probably even preserve because like this with a sweet pepper um could be really good um it just depends on how you go about it so I'd be really interested to see how that would work. I have my Jubilee tomato, which I also got from M.I. Gardener. If you haven't checked out M.I. Gardener, go ahead and do it. Um, because they have so much variety, um, and their prices are so reasonable. Um, I've seen I've seen anywhere from about 50 cents to $10 a packet of seeds. And the reason... Let me be very specific here. You will see that type of fluctuation because of scarcity of variety. Along with, with COVID, you, you saw a really big increase in people gardening and doing outside activities and things like that just to get out of the house, um, which it was understandable. But because of that, there was an increase in demand and there was not enough supply to go around. And so things are still kind of fluctuating and trying to get back to where they're supposed to go, which I mean is to be expected. You know, you gotta give that so you gotta give that grace period. That's just what happens. Um, now I cannot. I, I'm fairly certain that the Jubilee, it's a yellow tomato. I know that. Um, I can't remember if that's a Louisiana heirloom. Specifically, I want to say New Orleans. I want to say. It's either that or the Chernobyl, but I cannot remember, and I'm, I'm like pretty sure it's the Jubilee. Um, now we have Japanese black trifle, truffle, and we have the black fruit, which are both beautiful tomatoes. So they're going to have a like blue to purple shoulder on the tomatoes, and when somebody says, oh, it's a black whatever, it's not actually black. Like that, that's, no. Um... It is going to be a dark blue and dark purple that's giving it like a black hue to it. Um, I want to get into, like there's some white tomatoes that I think would be cool to add into the garden. Um, and then some like fully black, black tomatoes um, to where the whole thing is that dark blue purple color. And I think that'd be really pretty. Um, but with these two, they're just going to have those dark shoulders and then it's going to fade to red and it's going to look really pretty. Um, and my husband has had black crim before. I have not. I've never grown it, nor have I ever had it to eat. Um, so I'm really excited to try that. Um, it's, it, from what I've seen, it's stunning. So I'm thinking of actually um, slicing some of these and just doing thin slices, like maybe on a mandolin. Maybe not, maybe not the mandolin, but um, slicing them thin and freezing them in our, um, with the food, not the food processor. Babe, what's the thing that we use to, to suck the air out of shit? Vacuum? Yes, the vacuum sealer. Thank you. <laughs> and you can, you can vacuum seal stuff, so if you were to put it on um, a cooking sheet and you stick it in the deep freezer or just your freezer with like wax paper or something no, no, no. um no. and you freeze them and then you can vacuum seal them and the reason you freeze it first is so that way it has some sort of a harder integrity because with the pressure from the vacuum seal you can squish stuff right and you don't want to do that like that's not going to be good um and then I just double seal everything. After I vacuum seal it, I double seal it. I put a second seal on that just to make sure it's going to be good. And that even if that first seal does break, we got a second one there, right, just in case. And that way I'm good. We're not wasting food that way. Um, I have my Chernobyl tomato. Uh, that's another yellow tomato. Um, the reason I like the yellow tomatoes and the orange tomatoes a little bit more is because they're less acidic. Um, and then those darker tomatoes, those are going to have more of a smoky flavor. They are going to be a higher acid, but there's going to be a smoky flavor, and then there's going to be a sweetness to it, too. Um, the red tomatoes are just higher in acid. So, so the more color in your tomato, the redder that tomato is, the more acidic it is. The, 
the lighter that tomato is, the less acidic it is. So, I, you know, and I really like these colorful tomatoes, um, but I've, I've just started kind of looking into just really fun varieties to be able to grow. Um, and then, so we have my tr the Chernobyl that I'm going to grow, and then we have Mr. Stripey. And Mr. Stripey is a cool one because it's a slicer. Um, and it's not going to get huge, but it can get up to about two pounds. And it's going to stay this pretty circle shape. Um, and it's going to be red with um, orange stripes down it, which is it's so cool. Um, Big Rainbow. Big Rainbow is another one that I seed saved from that lovely gentleman who, who um, helped my husband and I at the farmer's market, who was the vendor. Um, and this thing, if I remember right, this thing was huge. It was like... A, almost a two pound tomato and it was like red and yellow and a little bit of purple and blue and orange I think like it was this it was just so cool and then when you cut it open I cut it in half because I was so curious I cut it in half and it was a fairly meaty tomato like there was still a lot of seeds and stuff but um poor biscuits trying to take a nap we're here talking um, and then, like, I cut it open. It was just this beautiful, like, green and orange and yellow and red marble color. Like, it was just marbled. It was the most beautiful thing. Um, so I'm really, really excited to grow that one again. It's a very, it's a centerpiece tomato. Like, I'm thinking of seeing if I can somehow, like, dry them or cure a couple tomatoes as like a cool decoration but I don't know we'll see um I have my orange accordion tomato I got that off of Baker or yeah Baker Creek this year um I had to have it it looks so cool it's so ruffled up that it's it like turns up and then it curves underneath and I wish I still had the package for it so I'm gonna have to start like I'm gonna have to get like a, an accordion folder or something um, to save these pack seed packets in just so you can, you know, I have them so I can show y'all what they look like and stuff without having to wait and just stare at me and nothing to look at when uh, I do these videos. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Readjust. Um, and then, so that's the rest. That's, that's all the big tomatoes. That's all the paste. I mean, there's only one paste tomato, but that's all the slicers and the beef steaks, and when I say beef steaks, I mean like the big suckers, you know, like you could bite into that sucker like a freaking big old burger, you know, it'd still give you the same size difference, you know, um, but then we have Honey Delight Hybrid, which is, if I remember right, that's a salad that, we have Sun Glow, which is also salad that, there's the Black Pearl, which like I was telling you earlier with the, um, Japanese Black Truffle and then the Black Crimp, it's not actually black. I remember right that one's more of a purple blue that fades to a pretty pretty green I think I'm not quite certain um, and then we have super sweet 100s those I know for a factor of burpee seed I got those this year at Menards um, before everything went out and those are cool because they grow on a cluster like grapes do um, and they're supposed to be really, really pro prolific. Um, I'm fairly certain that they're indeterminate, which just means that as long as you support that plant, it's going to just keep producing for you. As long as you, you keep harvesting to let it know to keep producing and you keep supporting it so it can keep producing, it's just going to keep going. Unlike a determinate tomato where no matter how much you extra you support it and... <laughs> All that, it's it's going to be done by a certain time, and that's just the way the determinate tomatoes are. And I don't think I have any on my list this year. I don't think I have any determinate tomatoes going this year, but I know I'm fine with that. We we love tomatoes. Um, I'll, I'll gladly eat tomato sandwiches and all that, and just um, tomato salad and all that in the summers, no problem. Um, I have green grape. Green grape, I am pretty sure, is really similar to, if I remember, if I'm thinking of the right thing, it's um, about the same thing as a gobstopper tomato, and um, pretty sure we got those. We seed saved those too. And then I have honeycomb hybrid, 
sun abbreviation bumblebee I'm not exactly sure what that one is <laughs> um, because the bag labeling was not correct completely um, so we'll just kind of wait and see what that one is um, and then we have the globe, golden globe hybrid which I do remember that is kind of a salad that so it's a little bit bigger than a cherry tomato so a cherry tomato is generally about about this big, about the same size as a quarter to a uh, silver dollar. Uh, salad debt is about this. Um, perfect for, for slicing for individual salad. Or if you wanted to use a salad with something else you could do. Um, if you wanted just a small snack or like a side for yourself for lunch, if you make yourself a sandwich or something, you can just dice that tomato up with um, some salt and pepper and um, some balsamic or something like that and just eat it that way. Uh, you could even add thyme or rosemary or, or basil or something to it. It'll be real good. Uh, now I have pre-picked what I'm doing for my for my hot peppers. All my peppers I've picked out. So we're gonna do jalapeno M, which I'm not exactly sure what that means. Um, but that is a hot pepper. I got that at Walmart recently. Um, I'm going to do my poblano, which I seed saved. That is a Walmart purchase, but that was not in a seed pack. I had to seed save for that. And seed saving peppers is ridiculously easy. Um, all them seeds that you always shake out into the trash or into your little compost, whatever, or your little scrap bin or bag or whatever, and then throw in the garbage. Um, all you got to do take them seeds take take that top top it um so you get that stem out pull that stem out really real easy and uh just set that aside let that dry sit it in the windowsill let it dry for about a week and uh then you can throw that in a baggie throw it in a baggie and then if you want to plant some go ahead and throw some of the, the seeds in the ground um you may want to let it dry out a little bit longer if you're going to plant them. Um, just because of the fact that that might mess with the germination just a little bit. Um, it should still work though. I don't see why it wouldn't. Um, I think it would be alright to go ahead and do it. Like my poblano, I let that dry out for about a full week. About a full week, and, but then I also put them in a baggie. Um, and when I say baggie, I use containers like this, or like the the big ones. Um, this this is the big ones. I, I, you know, so this is the containers that I use for the seeds, and. Um, I just, we got plastic bags, little reusable plastic bags off of Amazon. It was like a 300 pack. And then just them clear, clear hair bands um, to keep it all organized. And we use a label maker. We, we print out a label for the bag and uh, put it on the bag. And that's it. Um, and that's, that's what I did because I needed to wait a little bit longer to start my peppers. Because we are in the middle of a cold snap right now in April, which is normal. Um, <laughs> so that's totally normal for this time of year. Um, so, and then I found um, hot Italian peppercinis. Those I'm excited about. Um, Anaheim chilies. I'm going to do probably chili powder with those. I'm thinking of doing peppercinis and dehydrating like slices um, for soups and stuff. Hey, baby. Um, but then I want to pickle a bunch of them. Um, and have a, a hot lemon pepper. Where did I get my lemon pepper from? I want to say it was a burpee seed. I want to say Menards. I'm not certain. I don't have, I don't, I don't keep all those seeds. I don't, I don't want to look at how much money I've spent on seeds. And then I have um, a long, thin, hot cayenne pepper. And I'm going to mostly do that with, um, just, you know, make, make cayenne powder. And I'm going to do the same thing with the chili 
the Anaheim chili. Um, and I think too, what I'm gonna do is dehydrate a bunch of these peppers individually as whole peppers um, to go ahead and add to stews and stuff like that. But then also see if I can make um, like a really cool Cajun dry rub. Um, I, I just think something like that for like a crab oil would be really nice. I know a crab oil, but I live in Wisconsin. I want to go to crab oil. I had a cousin live in uh, New Orleans for a little while. I, I went to go visit him a few years ago, and he worked at uh, Coops in Irish Quarters. And I just I love crawfish so much, and we can't get it up here like we can down there. Um, and then for my sweet peppers, I have Lemon Dream, which I'm thinking of doing um, like a a jelly or a jam with that. Um, I just think that'd be yummy. Uh, I have a smoky red long sweet pepper and that is a pepper that I actually seed saved from Walmart. It came in a pack of three and I had never seen a sweet pepper look like this before. It looks like an oversized hot pepper. Like it looks like almost um, like an oversized poblano without being so so wide it's a little bit more narrow and longer and I thought it was really interesting but it's this it was like this really cool like red smoky color and it had a really neat flavor to it so I liked it a lot and I figured I might as well save the seeds and I might be able to improve that pepper uh, just depending on environmental stuff but this year is gonna be a little bit tricky because of the cicadas coming back um, Although it's once every 17 years, I remember the last time the last time this happened, it was pretty rough. Um, so I'm I'm gonna have to probably look into some sort of a netting or something to go over my garden, um, just to keep everything safe and protected because I don't I don't want anything to happen to my garden. I've worked really hard to try to just get to this point. Um, but I have my, my, my lemon dream sweet pepper, my smoky red long sweet. I have orange pepper, which is just orange bell pepper, I'm pretty sure. I have sweet banana pepper, and then I have a purple bell pepper, which is so cool. Um, it's actually purple. It's, it's like I'm a plum purple, so I'm really excited about that. So I'm going through and just kind of getting that situated. Like, this is where I had all my stuff before, and you can see some of it. And I had, like... It was way, I made it way over complicated and I'm just not going to do it like that. Um, because I mean, I had like germ dates and how many plants I was going to do and like uh, how many weeks it had to be inside and then it's maturity days and when I needed to plant it by and like all this stuff. And I'm not, I'm not doing that because, because of the fact of where I live. Um, being zone, zone 5B, um, my last frost date is the end of April, right? Um, but that can always be off a little bit. Um, and, and my first frost is October 7th, if I remember right, which it's always predicted, you know, it's, it's never 100% accurate, right? Um, so I'm not super super worried I am a little bit more behind but I think I'll be okay with my tomatoes and my peppers simply because they do have to stay inside for a little while um, to get ready to be able to go and start transitioning to being outdoors and to being hardened off and, and hardening off a plant all you do is you start transitioning it outside so it can build up that resistance without shocking your plants. Um, and like there is some stuff that you cannot start inside. Um, stuff that's very sensitive as far as what it does with its roots. Um, and I'm fine with that. Um, now we're gonna try okra. We actually got okra last year. We actually had um, burgundy okra last year. And yes, we love okra. Um, yes, we eat it as often as we possibly can. Yes, my husband is from the South, and I'm not, and I don't care. We eat like we both live down, down South. Um, I, we, we both love okra. Um, you can even buy, like, pink okra. Um, I want to say I found, like, pink okra seeds once on, uh, 
on like Baker Creek. I want to say I have that like saved in my wish list on there um, just because I thought it looked so cool. But um, so I already got figured out my peppers and my tomatoes. So let me go ahead and cross that off. And then y'all are going to help me finish the rest of it. And like these are all of my containers. And then all these little like these these little dividers, those come out. Not all of them, all of them, like the ones running horizontally and not vertically. Uh, those come out. But most of the vertical ones come out. So let's go through, and maybe I'll grab my squash seeds that I saved, that I have set up, that I did seed saving with. Oh, I don't want these. I don't want this. This is my actual, like, flower flowers. And I don't... You know, like, I'm probably just going to toss some impatience, which, no, I'm not saying, as in being impatient, I'm, I'm saying the actual, like, flower <laughs> impatience. Um, ah, uh, here's my okra. Okay, this is what I want. And, like, we have watermelon and honeydew. I'm going to do that. And then, like, there's a ton of lettuce and stuff. Like, this one has chard, lettuce, spinach, leek. Fennel, cabbage, calabi, celery, choy, Brussels sprouts, and cauliflower. And I'm, I'm super excited about that. Um, the one with my squash has squash, gourds, cucumber, zucchini, eggplant, and pumpkins. And I have really cute little pumpkins this year that I want to do as decorations. Um, that I'm really, really excited about. Because I, I want to say they're called like Jack B. Little or Johnny B. Little. Something like that. And they only get a couple ounces, and, like, they stay tiny. They're supposed to be tiny like that, so they're real, real cute. Um, and those are a burpee seed. I know that for a fact, because I got those at Menards with the rest of my stuff. I had so many seeds that day. Poor cashier looked at me like she wanted to just walk away and throw her apron on the ground. Well, like this one, I got okra. I got my okra. I got my peas, and I got my beans, and then I have... Just the one thing for corn. Um, we're not too picky about corn, but I like using it on the grill. I like doing it in salsa. And um, and I want to make some elote. Um, we love elote. We do. So, I think that's what we're going to do. And I can't remember if I did all of my okra or not if I'm going to do all that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of go through what I have and then I'm going to go through what I have written down and figure out if I'm going to change anything or not as far as um, what I want to grow. Okay, Lawn Pod Perkins. I got my burgundy and I got my Govig and I got my Clemson Spineless. Okay, so yeah. Real quick, I'll just show you what the Clemson bag is. Those are huge right um but i mean like you can get stalks of these okra that are like really good size around and need to take like a chainsaw to cut them down and you have to you know it's kind of a pain sometimes to get um get them down um at the end of the season and they are prolific like you we probably do not need all these but we don't care enough to not plant them all so we're just gonna go ahead and do it and that's just what it's gonna be and it's fine um, especially because like some of this stuff isn't gonna come through right away um, so like a lot of the the, the pumpkins are gonna take about 95 days 95 to 100 days ish, give or take. Um, the winter squash is going to be about the same thing. Um, same thing with our gourds. Um, we're not going to. I'm not going to do a birdhouse this year. I had been debating on that because I thought the birdhouse was cool, but I had found out it takes anywhere from six months to a year for that to dry out, and I would just rather use the space differently. Um, I don't want to use the space for that to dry out. Um, I'm probably going to save one just to seed save. And then the rest of them, you know, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of them. 
probably put them in the fire pit, to be honest. Um, have a good, good fire at the end of the season, call it a day. Um, I'm, I'm doing okra, though. Or, no, I'm doing okra. Lufa is what I meant to say. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. But I'm going to just go through this with y'all and, um, yeah, I'm just going to go through this and then, um, write down what I'm going to do and what I'm not and change anything that needs to be changed. But I'm not going to go ahead and do the dates and all that. You know, I can, for the most part, all that is about the same. But so far I've already up to 35 veggies that I've, that I've picked out. Um, 20 of which are tomatoes, so, I mean, do with that information what you will. I'm fine with it. I don't have any issues with it, and neither does my husband or my daughter, so we all love fresh foods and fresh veggies and all that. Um... You and my daughter and my husband. She's so cute. Because apparently her like mini doll is naughty. And I'm just hearing her hearing her talking about it and telling telling about it and it's so cute. It's her age is so funny too because like she's two, you know, so it's very inquisitive. She's very curious. But she also is um almost honest to a fault. Like, she'll do something she's not supposed to. And she'll be really honest about it. And I appreciate that level of honesty, but it's like, you didn't want to... Like, you, you, you're getting yourself in trouble here, bub. But she just goes along with it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just do all four of my okra. However, I have a note on here that says two of each. I made an eight plants total. Uh, that'll be way too much over for us because of how prolific they are. Um, sometimes you even have to harvest like twice a day. So I'm just not going to do that. Um, so we're going to do all of them. So I'm going to do my Clemson. I'm going to do the Long Cloud. I'm going to do the Burgundy and I'm going to do the Go Big. Um, you know, there's still some couple other varieties I want to get my hands on, but I don't have them this year and it's not the end of the world. They're all, all these are going to be great. Um, they're going to do exactly what we need them to, and they're going to fulfill their purpose. So I'm not worried, um, you know, and you can, you can freeze them and then you can vacuum seal and stick them in a deep freeze to save them that way. You can slice them and dehydrate them. You can freeze them whole. You can, um, slice them and then pickle them to fry later. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do. You can even fry them beforehand, um, and then freeze them and do it that way too to store it that way um, but you have to be careful if you wait too long the pods will get huge and they'll get real real hard and you'll hear the the seeds inside kind of banging around and by that time you can't eat it um, so there's kind of a happy medium with with um, with uh, harvesting the okra, but I'm really excited about the okra this year. So Clemson's fine list, long pod. And I want to say the long pods get, did I make a note? No, it doesn't say how long they get, but I want to say they get around like six inches long, six to eight inches or something. So they're decent, you know, and you, you can do a lot with that. I actually want to try making some like dehydrated soup mix um, with like dehydrated okra, dehydrated onions, dehydrated tomatoes, and like potatoes and a few other things just to see how that goes uh, just because I am curious to see if that would be an option um, but I am really excited and like we just got our gate 
finished painted the other day um, for the garden. And I can give you guys a garden tour. I did a video with me painting that fence the other day and I just, it did not work out how I thought it was going to. I was very upset. Um, but we have so many options as far as how to do this. So like, really going to be doing a lot of vertical gardening this year. And when I say vertical gardening, I don't mean like expecting to be able to just plant something and then have it grow straight up. Um, cause that's not how it works. Um, what I mean by that is doing a lot of like trellis work, um, with T-posts and just using them cattle panels in the T-posts that, and we need more T, we know, you know, we need more T-posts, but, um, I think it's, Excuse me, oh my gosh. Um, I think it's going to be great. Um, so, you know, I'm not quite sure exactly everything that I'm going to be planting this year. Um, like, I have onion seeds, but I, my husband had bought a bag of onions, onion starts, um, and bulbs from the store. And so I think I'm going to go through that and pick out the bad ones and then just plant those instead. Um, instead of using my seeds. I don't need my seeds if I already have something else. And you can also, like I have a couple leeks that I saved. Um, and there's one actually out in my garden in a container right now. And that was literally me cutting the end off of a leek that I had bought from the store to use for dinner. That I had cut up used for dinner. And I just saved that end and I put it in a little glass with just some like room temp water and let it sit for a few days to get it cleaned out and get those roots cleaned out and get them healthy again um so they could soak all that up and then when it was ready i planted it in that soil and i put it under my grow lights and then i started getting it hardened off and i took it outside um and it's been doing great so, so I have actually two of those that, and I have the second one that I need to do, and then I have some spuds from my potatoes, my purple, uh, my red potatoes, um, and they like spudded pretty good. Um, so we're gonna see. I think I'm gonna try those too this year. Um, and then my husband also bought a thing of I think fing purple fingerling potatoes and then Yukons, but I'm not entirely certain. So, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a process, and like, I have, I have another one here. Um, and this is all my roots and stuff. So this has my radishes, this has my turnips, this has a beet. Um, probably not going to use that. Um, yeah, I, I had tried it, I had tried a beet, and um, the beet. It was a mess to clean, to cook. It was a mess cooking. It texturally was not my favorite. Um, and it was cool too. Is some of these come in like these rolls, so you would just roll this out and lay it down on the ground, and it's already got these seeds in here. See, you can kind of see where the seeds are. And you just lay it down. Um, I would use a beet or beets for um, more for their color um, to use for fabric coloring, to use for makeup, to use for dying Easter eggs, um, stuff like that. I could see myself, but. Gosh, excuse me, but not to um, not to cook with. You know, it, it colored everything I cooked, um, and I just was not a fan of that whole experience at all. It was a freaking mess. <laughs> so, I mean, if you're somebody that loves beets and there's a specific way and recipe that you do things, please let me know. I'm I'm willing to try it, um, but I was very unimpressed unenthused about the entire situation, just kind of aggravated by that entire thing. But, um, 
you know, I'm really excited about this year. I think it's going to go really great. So I'm going to end up today. What I'm going to do is um, I am going to get the rest of what I'm going to grow this year into my notebook um, where I need it and uh, start maybe maybe get um, my peppers going today um, since I got my tomatoes going yesterday and maybe maybe when I do that maybe I'll do that later so you guys can see how I do that because it's fairly easy um, to be totally honest it's just kind of a process um, and I don't have a warm enough or clean enough space to just do it really quickly and make a mess and not have to worry about it. Um, it's just too cold here, um, especially since we're in the middle of another cold snap. So I'm hoping that this is the last one, um, but like I can't get anything outside at all. And I'm thankful that um, when it was warm, I didn't get anything outside. But that's just kind of what I'm doing today, you know? And and like these, these are awesome containers. What, you got these at Walmart, right? Yeah. Tackle box? Yeah. Yep, tackle box. All right. You know, and so they're waterproof, which is fantastic, right? Um, if anything was to happen, if I was to forget one of these outside and it was closed, that's fine. It, it, I don't have to worry about it. Between uh, the container itself being waterproof and the plastic bags I have all my seeds in, I'm not concerned at all um, that those seeds would be bad or all of them would spontaneously start to germinate. Um, now if I did not use the baggies, like when, I, when we first got these we only had like decorative flower seeds and I had to leave them just loosely in these little compartments in these, in these here. And um, that was not a good time. I don't recommend that at all. These would also be great for, um, like if you're just in other crafting stuff too. So, you know, just, just keep that in mind. Um, but just keep in mind too, a big part of gardening and just the season in itself, the season of life I think we're all kind of just in right now. You know, just show yourself love and grace and patience and take your failures as a learning opportunity instead of a failure, if that makes any sense. I hope it does. Um, and again, thank you, Devin. I love you. My dear, dear friend, I'm so thankful for you. And I think it was so sweet. I had no idea you were sending me a gift. I thought that was so amazing. Um, totally made my day. Um, but I'm going to finish this and then uh, maybe in a couple days I'll show you guys what I've come up with. Um, and I can show you my seed starts and all that. So, alright guys, bye.